This documentary shows the goals, the ambitions and the achievements of the Excel Joint Undertaking Project position. About 10% of the people in the Western world will at a certain age in their life be treated in a catheter lab for a heart problem. Fortunately, these days, most of these interventions can be done through minimally invasive procedures that are assisted by a host of smart imaging and sensing catheters that are the eyes and ears of the surgeon. In the Precision Project, we wanted to do something completely new. We wanted to build an open technology platform in the domain of smart catheters and implants in a European context. We expected um, to, to really to get a step ahead in regard to the um, um, technological approaches that we can use for, for future products. We, from the very beginning, had a strong interest in also um, um, translate this into, into other applications, like, like uh, lead design um, and the lead construction. It has been a big improvement. Yeah, collaborating with all the partners in the position project basically has meant that we, can, we have been able to show the feasibility of our concept and also uh, orchestrate our uh, supply chain. Very thin guide wires with a pressure sensor in the tip are used to see if and where a stent needs to be placed. With an IFS catheter, ultrasound images can be made from within the coronary arteries to see what type of stent is needed. When a valve needs to be replaced, catheters are used to make ultrasound images from within the heart to guide the placement. And for the treatment of arrhythmia, there are electrophysiology catheters that indicate where the surgeon needs to ablate. Life-saving as these smart catheters are, they are without exception made with outdated technologies. They still use analog signals, transported over many wires that need to be assembled manually, and most of them need a separate readout console, resulting in a cluttering of equipment in the cath lab. One of the biggest problems in innovation in smart catheters is that without exception all these instruments are made with technological point solutions, proprietary point solutions. This, for instance, is an IVUS catheter. It's a beautiful instrument that's being used during angioplastic surgery to make a radial image from within your coronary arteries to see what type of stent you need and if the stent has been correctly placed. Beautiful as this instrument is, it is a technological point solution, which means that it can only, the technology can only be used for this catheter. What we have done in the Position project is, is that we have developed a technology platform that can be used by multiple users for multiple applications to build their smart catheter product. That will not only make these catheters cheaper, but it will also generate the, the production volume that is needed to do a sustainable innovation. Apart from the fact that we have moved from a point solution to a platform technology, we are also introducing the latest state-of-the-art technologies. For instance, we have replaced piezo-ceramic transducers with MEMS transducers. And we are moving digitization to the tip of the instrument. Digitization in the tip of the instrument will lead to serialization of data, and serialization of data in the end will lead to standardization. We are not targeting necessarily one specific application. We are uh, trying to make a platform that will be available, that has building blocks, then we can more easily take and combine together to tailor them for a specific application. In the Excel Joint Undertaking Position Project, 46 partners from 12 countries work together to develop open platform technology for the next generation of smart catheters and implantable devices. These devices will use state-of-the-art sensor technologies have digitization at the tip of the catheter, be soft encapsulated and easier to operate by the surgeon. Since blood is not transparent, most of the smart catheters use ultrasound. Here, the breakthrough innovation is the development of microfabricated MEMS ultrasound transducers. These micro-machined ultrasonic transducers are fabricated using MEM technology, the same used to realize many types of commonly used sensors such as the microphones, accelerometers and gyroscopes embedded in our smartphones. 
They consist of large arrays of thousands of microscopic membranes that can act as tiny loudspeakers and microphones able to generate and detect ultrasonic waves in the megahertz range. There are two types of micromachined ultrasonic transducers, each relying on a different operating principle. Capacitive micromachined ultrasonic transducers, known as CMUTs, are based on electrostatic sensing and actuation, and piezoelectric micromachined ultrasonic transducers, known as PMUTs, in which sensing and actuation uh, rely on piezoelectric. The key advantage of micromachined ultrasonic transducer technologies as compared to the well-established and mature conventional bulk piezoelectric technology is the integration of the transducer and the front-end electronics, which is enabled by the enhanced compatibility between MEMS and standard integrated circuit technology. One of the possible advantages is to go at higher frequencies because with the piezo bulk transducers we are limited by the, the, the thickness of the layers and it's way easier for mains based transducers to, uh, to reach uh, uh, highest frequency. On the other side effect is that um, the way it's working makes it easy to reach uh, good bandwidth for the, the device compared to a classic uh, piezo bulk transducer. Having a large bandwidth means that um, it will increase the resolution of the pulse and at the end we can see uh, final details in the image. So at the end it should result in the, in the better quality image. Many European institutes and companies are developing their own MEMS ultrasound technologies. In the Position Project, a unique pan-European benchmark is executed to learn from each other and to reduce duplication. So in the benchmark, 10 companies and institutes came with the same test structure to be evaluated using the same protocols in order to evaluate them objectively. The goal of the benchmark is to map all those different technology options to the application and to see together which technology best fits to which healthcare application. I hope that this way that we benchmark all the technologies will help us to introduce the standards, how all those MEM technologies can be characterized. We are also going based on data to come with a statement which technology is strong in which field and we believe that that will help all industries to focus on where they are strong on. And I think this is definitely leading to a quality. In some catheters, such as the intravascular ultrasound catheter, more than a hundred of these MEMS ultrasound transducers are individually connected to five integrated circuits. The complete system needs to be squeezed in a cylinder with a diameter of less than one millimeter. To allow this type of complex electronic systems to be folded into and wrapped around the tip of the catheter, the flex to rigid platform was developed. The flex rigid platform technology takes over where PCB and flex foil technologies stop. These are quite bulky technologies and for some solutions you need much smaller uh, interconnect technologies, for example for catheters. So this flex to rigid technology has very fine interconnects which is defined by standard IC technologies which makes it also suitable for volume production. It consists of very thin silicon islands, which can have some functionality, for example, such as an ultrasound transducer. And these thin silicon islands have a thickness of less than half of a hair and are connected by these flexible interconnect foils, which makes it easy to put them in such a small form factor of a catheter. In position, many partners work together to realize the Flex to Rigid platform. Ochmetic made special cavity SOI wafers. Fraunhofer and Feintech developed the assembly and inspection technologies to connect to ASICs. 3D Micromac developed high precision laser tooling techniques to fabricate the metal support structures. While the Flex to Rigid development itself was hosted and coordinated by Philip MEMS and Micro Devices. 
The result is a universal and flexible open technology platform that can be used by many smart catheters, such as this innovative digital pressure wire that has a complete electronic circuit in its 300 micrometer diameter tip. Next to the miniaturized state-of-the-art sensors, digitization at the tip is the second major objective of the position project. In the position project, the Technical University of Eindhoven, Philips Research, the Institute for Microelectronics in Stuttgart, Tyndall National Institute in Cork, Analog Devices in Limerick and Inesc in Lisbon, have joined forces to realise a number of digital smart catheter demonstrators to identify the particular challenges of digitisation at the tip. Well, for digitisation at the tip, um, indeed the size, the space available is very, very limited. And on top of that also the power budget is limited because a temperature increase of more than a degree, for example, is simply not acceptable inside a human body. Uh, moreover, also the power supply lines are usually very poorly defined and we need a very high linearity and bandwidth for the converter and this all makes the design very challenging. On top of that, these data converters, they also produce a lot of output data and with present technology it's simply not possible to compress this in the tip and that's why we need a high-speed data link uh, which enables to move the data from the tip of the instrument to the outside world and that's really another major challenge in this design. Since data rates generated by imaging catheters are approaching the limits of what can be handled by miniaturized coaxial cables, researchers in the Position Project are exploring the use of optical fibers for high-speed data communication in catheters. This tiny module developed by the University of Technology in Delft, measuring the size of a quarter grain of sugar, converts high-speed electrical signals into light and couples it into optical fiber. A revolutionary electrophysiology catheter demonstrator, driven by partner OSIPCA, not only uses an optical fiber to communicate with the tip of the catheter with light, but it also powers the complete circuit at the tip using the light. The system uses a miniature blue LED to convert light into electricity with an efficiency in excess of 40%. The main advantage is, in the end, uh, to get MR compatible means um, to really avoid uh, metallic structures inside a shaft. You can do a lot of simulations and, and layout work how to make a um, metallic structure with metallic conductors also MR compatible. Of course, the most noble way is um, to simply avoid the metallic structures and gives the highest degree of flexibility. The other approach, the, the other huge advantage is um, the miniaturization in the end that, that you achieve. We can save a lot of space that we can then use uh, to further shrink down the, the dimension of the lead or the catheter um, or um, to use this for other functions. I think when we, when we look at implants also with um, this kind of communication, there um, it would um, it, it, it helps a lot in regard to durability. So um, all typical cabling might have some issues in regard to durability for, for flex strain and and here um, a, a glass fiber is a, is, a, is a super solution that helps to avoid a plastic deformation in metallic conductors so means make the device much more robust. Biocompatible and reliable encapsulation of electronic devices that go into the body is obviously of paramount importance. This especially holds for the next generation of miniature implantable devices that will be used to treat many chronic diseases and that will remain permanently in the body. Since these devices will have to be small and flexible, they cannot use traditional titanium housing, but will have to rely on polymeric encapsulation. In position, we have been focusing on investigating a number of different materials in the position techniques. Um, we have uh, more specifically investigated paralene and uh, a number of different uh, ALD materials. Um, ALD stands for atomic layer deposition. We use these as uh, substrates or coatings and we are testing the long-term performance of these coatings using a dedicated setup that we have, which can uh, perform very, very sensitive uh, impedance uh, measurements. 
over long lifetimes. The setup that we have can also create an environment which accelerates the testing. So we can increase the temperatures, we can apply different kinds of electrical signals on our devices and um, look at the performance uh, after months or years. So this is what we are testing and then the most promising materials uh, or combination of materials we are also investigating in vivo. The fast-growing startup company Salvia, that recently secured a capital investment of 26 million euro, is using the technologies developed in position in one of the world's first soft encapsulated implants. In Salvia, we develop a solution for people with chronic migraine. Everybody will know someone with migraine. One out of seven people have migraine, but only 10% of those people have chronic migraine, meaning that they have more than 15 headache days per month of which at least eight days are migraine days. So these people have a very poor quality of life. Whenever I have a headache, I would tend to massage the nerves in the front of my head or at the back of my head. And this is actually calming down the headache circuits in the brain. Other companies long ago have shown that with neurostimulation, you can effectively do the same, but more intensively. So by stimulating the nerves electrically, uh, you can develop a preventative therapy, meaning that people do not get migraine attacks as often anymore. It's an implant for chronic migraine. It's an electrical uh, implant, very flat, very thin, that can be implanted under the skin to stimulate nerves, for example, at the front of your head or at the back of your head. This is the product as it's on the market now. It's quite thick and heavy. It has a, a metal can which has to be implanted somewhere else except from the head because there you don't simply don't have the room. And they have to tunnel this whole lead through the back somewhere to implant this there. So it's quite invasive um, surgery. Then additional this is a lead which is round. Um, while in fact we only need to send out to one direction. Uh, therefore we made a new uh, design which is much thinner it's much smaller um, you don't have to tunnel leads through the neck um, where you get kinking it is just this implant which is inserted with a very small incision under the skin so it's it's very easy implantable limited problems with with breakage of a lead for example it basically changes everything. It makes that the patient can have a reliable solution, but also the procedure can be very effective. So rather than several hours in a fully equipped uh, operating room, this can be an outpatient procedure in just 15 minutes. The most challenging thing of making this product work was to protect this, this electronic area um, with a very thin, robust layer. This is what we have been doing with Position Partners. Uh, we have been developing encapsulation uh, for the electronic islands. We have also developed accelerated lifetime testing to test the lifetime of this encapsulation in an accelerated method um, to check what the lifetime of a product is. And we actually have developed uh, a layer and uh, a testing method to prove that it's a long-term implantable device. So by joining the position project, this project has enabled us to work together with the partners to show the feasibility of our technology, which has led us to the point of September 2020 that we secured a 26 million venture capital round, based on which we have grown the team from 14 people up to 25 people now only nine months later. Another form of encapsulation is developed by a consortium in Spain, which may represent a breakthrough in the regeneration of damaged myocardial tissue as a result of heart failure. Here, stem cell-derived heart muscle cells are injected into damaged myocardial tissue. In the real world right now, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer. So this involves um, strokes and cerebrovascular uh, accidents and myocardial infarction and it's actually a complex problem. Once a person has a heart attack, as of today there is no way to really cure the cells that die. So a heart attack, a myocardial infarction, the processes that are coronary artery, which is one of the ones that are um, give the 
nutrition to the heart itself gets blocked. But we have uh, treatments for infarction that actually work very well, but once the cell is dead, there is no way that it's going to recover. So the body acts by creating a scar. The trouble is that the heart is a muscle that needs to be contracted continuously, and the um, scar tissue is not contracting. So when this scar is too big, the patient gets into heart failure and can die both in the acute and in the chronic setting. So from some years now, there is a trend that we are trying to use um, stem cells to help recover that scar tissue. We won't have the connective tissue, which is the fibrous tissue, converting into muscle again. But maybe we can help the remaining cells to create new muscle. So for the position project, we are developing a, a catheter that has uh, three lumens. Through one of them, the encapsulated cells that we have uh, also prepared for this project will be injected into the heart. So for the injection, in order to control the, the speed and the rate of injection so that we are able to deliver uh, a controlled and correct dosing of the encapsulated cells, we are using a micro pump. So the, once we have the catheter fully integrated, we will have uh, the ultrasound guide wire that goes through one lumen and the lumen for injection that is controlled by the micro pump. The position project is not only addressing the catheter technology itself, but also the way these instruments interface with the catheter lab equipment and how they are used. In terms of disturbances, we see basically two main issues that, that, that the user is complaining about. On the one hand, you have uh, cable clutter. So within such an environment, you have typically a lot of uh, devices and catheters that are connected to the system with wires and that they are on top of the patient and also interfering with the system. This is very cumbersome and that is a situation that we want to solve. The other aspect is the data clutter. And that's more on the, on the system level, where a clinician has to face and to, to interact with a lot of different data sources like imaging, like X-ray and ultrasound images, or other measurements of the patient like blood pressure. And he has to uh, process all this data. And that is also a very complex situation where he needs to focus on the patient. And also there we want to get rid of this complexity and, and offer an environment that uh, automatically processes all this complex data such that the, that the user has an intuitive environment to work in. Within the project we have developed a prototype for a patient interface module as it is called um, that makes a wireless connection between the catheter and the rest of the system. And uh, so this, this makes life easier. You don't have the burden of, of checking the cable whether it's in the way. An important part of this, of this uh, device that has been developed is a, a wireless connection that is very power efficient and uh, it offers a, a battery life which has a factor 10 uh, better uh, battery life compared to similar systems. For the data clutter, the solution that we have worked on in the position project is a software platform that integrates all these various sources that I mentioned, like X-ray imaging, ultrasound imaging, other measurements, in a smart way and uh, presents it in a very immersive or, or comprehensive way to the user. So instead of having multiple screens that he has to look at, it's all condensed into one single viewing console that offers a very intuitive way of, of interacting with this data. In a project with such a large consortium as the Position Project, it is impossible to cover all the topics addressed in the project or to do fully justice to the individual contributors of each partner. The goal of this video was to give an impression of what can be achieved in large collaborative projects like the Position Project and to show the added value of bringing together a large group of multidisciplinary partners resulting in new technology platforms, products and cooperation that very often transcend the project boundaries. Since we have been working uh, for a long time um, and since now many, many uh, groups, research groups and uh, companies are uh, working uh, in these uh, micro-machine ultrasonic transducer technologies, Position 2 uh, has been a, a really good chance to see where we stand, at least at the European uh, level.
Well, what is uh, really unique for us in position is this uh, possibility to meet all the people working on this technology and uh, having all these people at, on the, at the same table so we can exchange about uh, the difficulties we are facing. We can check if our own difficulties are the same than our neighbor in Germany or anywhere else in Europe. The final goal of this work package is to have a benchmark linking the different kind of MEMS-based technologies to uh, the applications. So it will be easier uh, in the coming years to say, okay, this kind of MEMS-based transducer is more suitable for this kind of imaging for cardiac applications or other stuff like this. We ourselves would, I guess, we wouldn't have made um, a catheter with, with optical communication. There, there are too many disciplines that we couldn't have addressed ourselves. Um, and, and, and this helps us also to, to, to acquire new technologies and possibilities to use this also in other fields. Looking a little bit into um, exploitation um, of the results, um, I think here, um, especially the position project, um, is this the right word, overmet our expectations? <laughs> because uh, we are already right now in, in, in three quite concrete um, um, discussions with possible further customers. And I'm not sure if this would have happened without the results that we generated within position. We are almost at the end of the project and at this moment in time we are finishing all of the demonstrators and all of the results of the project will be available soon uh, in a few months from now. What's next is first of all that we like to bring the results that we have uh, gained in the project and bring them to real products uh, that can be brought to the market. And next, of course, we'd like to build also on the result of the project in the next project in which we extend what we have done to platform development for broader domains within the medical context. Well, within the project, the biggest achievement is that within a project with so many partners, we still were able to realize the objectives that we had intended and realize very nice products. This is only feasible if you do this in a context like, like this, a huge European project uh, enabled by uh, the Excel joint undertaking, uh, which brings all of the different parties together.